Good evening, I'm Jeff View. And I'm Jenny Puron. Here's what's coming up next on Panther Vision. Court, the campus clash continues as students who were arrested appear before a judge. And you've heard about putting pedal to the metal, but some are putting their feet to the street. We'll explain. Then, we're giving you backstage access to where many students have never been before. All this and more next on Panther Vision. From the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee, this is UWM Panther Vision. A weekly newscast reported, written, and produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication. And now, the news. The campus tuition protest has now moved from Chapman Hall to the courtroom. Fifteen students arrested at Chapman Hall protests made their initial appearance in court. Panther Vision's Erica Gunther has a story. The atmosphere here is peaceful. As the protesters are called to the bench to hear the charges against them, the mood is serious. It's far different than March 4th, when they were arrested during the tuition protest at Chapman Hall. The charges against the 15 range from assembly prohibited violence, force, or threats to throwing hard objects. Many of the students appeared in court, but all had their attorneys speak for them. All pled not guilty. Veteran defense attorney Jim Shallow is representing some of the students. At the moment, there are serious questions of whether the statutes are constitutional, whether the rules for UWM are constitutional, whether they're being applied properly. And that's what we're observing for the trial judge. UWM senior Rachel Madison spoke on behalf of the other defendants, saying they will continue to fight for educational rights. I think that it's important for us to continue to fight for justice and equality, despite what consequences it might have for us as individuals. Pre-trial motions have been set for April 29th. In Milwaukee, I'm Erica Gunther for Panther Vision. A couple of the protesters also face drug, drug, drug charges. One is charged with weapon possession. They're pleading not guilty to those charges as well. The man involved in the death of UW-Milwaukee student is sentenced to life in prison. Shondell Jackson was convicted as being party to the crime of the death of Nathan Potter. Jackson's charges include first degree intentional homicide and attempted robbery. Derek Thomas also pled guilty in that crime. He's been sentenced to 12 years in prison. Milwaukee police are investigating an armed robbery near campus. Two suspects robbed a woman in broad daylight at the intersection of Locust and Downer on Monday. Those suspects were armed with a semi-automatic gun and demanded the woman's purse. The suspects fled with the purse. If you are a victim of a robbery attempt, police recommend you cooperate and turn over your property. From the chains of slavery to an election of a black president, African Americans have been empowered. But according to many UWM students, staff, and faculty, having power doesn't change one's race. Zoranda Sanford has the story. Racism is alive and well in UWM because it is a microcosm of society. The fireside lounge was heated as tensions rose. How do I utilize my white allies? How do I stand up and say, okay, enough is enough? How is racism addressed when it goes ignored? Afroecology professor Ahmed Mbalia feels racism fueled the treatment of UWM student Robin Foster after she refused to leave class. But you've got to question the fact that she was thrown to the ground by the police on this campus. Students aren't the only ones feeling targeted by their white counterparts. African American staff I'm shocked. I'm on okay. and professors we may be ugly, but thank God we are white. Are fed up as well. Uh, we've had several instances of uh, racial, uh, negative racial responses on this campus. Some people, people say racism is dead. I saw signatures of KKK. I saw statements, it does go home. Afro-ecology club member Ben Windroff says people would be crazy to think racism is net UWM. We've become much better at avoiding racism as an issue, at calling things other names other than racism. As more and more testimonies filled the room, Heartbreaking. 
Encouragement follow. Tough skin. In Milwaukee, I'm Zoranda Sanford for Panther Vision. Woodson Week is an annual event that honors Dr. Carter Woodson and his contributions that help fund what is known today as Black History Month. And the UWM Policy Board is proposing an increase in segregated fees for a renovation of the Student Union. Students voted last week on whether to pass a $75 million upgrade for the Union. The proposed in improvements include more seating, an update to technology, and enhancements to make the Union more environmentally friendly. The proposal calls for UWM students to pay more than $100 per semester for at least 20 years. PantherVision will keep you updated as results become available. Segregated fees may be on the rise for UWM, but UW-Madison students are rejecting a proposal that would increase their student fees. Students were asked whether they wanted to increase fees by about $50 a semester to build a new fitness center. 62% of the 14,000 students who, were vo who voted were against the center. The proposal would increase fees for 30 years. Well, it's stressful enough to simply dealing with finals. Add finding that first rental home in the mix, and most students are at a, simply at a loss with what to do. Luckily, as Panther Vision's Megan Phillips reports, UWM has resources in place to ease most of that pressure. So, how is dorm life? We hate it. <laughs> students all over campus will soon find themselves in the market for that first time rental property. Officially be on your own. It's like you come to college, you go to the dorms, you're kind of on your own, but you're kind of not. And the University of Wisconsin-Milwaukee Off-Campus Housing Center is there to help students, like Monica Verstang, a UWM freshman. I'm finally out there, it's definitely the real world. The 11th Annual Housing Fair held on campus helps students to find that perfect fit. We bring landlords to the campus so they can showcase their available units so that students don't even have to leave the campus to find quality housing. It's UWM housing events like these that help transition students out of the dorm life and into possible moments like these. Yeah, but then see he's like retiled everything, like yeah. all back yeah. there. The moment they find that perfect first time house. For sure. We have this one, this one on Oakland, and then one on Frederick. To live in on their own. Can they take a picture of us handing over the check? <laughs> and the UWM Neighborhood Housing Office will be there along the way to help with any road bumps first time renters may encounter. Sam, we gotta look at our room. We gotta figure out who's who's who. In Milwaukee, I'm Megan Phillips for Panther Vision. If you need help with your off-campus residence, simply visit www.neighborhoodhousing.uwm.edu. A UWM alumna is being awarded print journalism's highest honor. Raquel Rutledge is receiving a Pulitzer Prize in local reporting. She is being honored for her work exposing fraud and abuse in a child care program for low-wage working parents. Rutledge is an investigative reporter at the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. UWM Panther Vision is also being honored with awards for journalistic excellence. Two of our stories from last year were named Best in Six States by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Reporter Ryan Schoonover and photojournalist Kayla Ganter won in the general news category for their story about cars being towed. Because of street sweeping, in the news feature, Stephanie Schell and Matt Slyker won for a report about senior citizens auditing classes at UWM. The American Geographical Society Library is getting a $315,000 grant. The grant comes from National Endowment for Humanities and will be used to update the library's photo archive. And as I found out, the photos date back centuries. Scanners are not uncommon to find around UWM. But step inside the east wing of the library and you will find a different kind of scanner. Working in the lab today is UWM graduate Ling Meng. We drink coffee in the morning and tea in the afternoon. Scanning might seem easy, but when you are dealing with documents more than a hundred years old, okay. it isn't. Oh, like from a, a very old book, we can um, like uh, enhance the contrast in a software like. Uh, Photoshop. Digital Collections Librarian Christina Matusiak has scanned a few pictures in her day. She knows there is no guarantee these photos will see tomorrow. They, first of all, they do deteriorate. You lose the, the data and, and the negative. They are also flammable. <laughs> Which is exactly why these photos have been scanned into the digital photo archive. 
And I think that digital technology, if you think about it, it really allowed us to tap into those hidden collections and, you know, um, digitize and provide access to users. Otherwise, who's going to come and look at the glass negatives or film negatives? This type of dedication takes time and energy, especially when many documents have an unknown historical background. Actually, I don't know. I just guess it might be like a Buddhism book. Okay. But the main focus of this digital lab is to just keep on scanning. In Milwaukee, I'm Jenny Piran for Panther Vision. The AGSL hopes to use the grant money to hire more staff. New staff members would help organize and store the collection at a faster pace. Coming up, UWM, UWM students are being a ch given a chance to save lives. Find out how. And what's going on behind closed doors in the Klatchy Center? All this and more coming up on Panther Vision. City of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Visit uwm.edu for information. It happens every day. It doesn't stop when you reach a certain age. We're all of us learning, even now. You see something in a person's face and see all they struggle to learn. It could be we are here solely to remind each other what must not be missed or ignored, but celebrated. When do we stop learning? Maybe never. In Chinese medicine, that the body has to move. Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, Judge Best Student Newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College. You can save a life this week. If you are willing to give blood, that is, the Blood Center of Wisconsin is holding a blood drive at the UWM Union from noon to 5. To help encourage you to donate, Pizza Shuttle will be delivering and distributing pizza for free of charge. The donors from noon to 4. Donors are encouraged to schedule appointments at, at bcw.edu slash UWM April. The drive will be held in the Union Ballroom. UWM's athletic department is using some of its top-of-the-line amenities to recruit new athletes. Panther Vision's Eric Litzheim takes us on a behind-the-scenes tour. It's a side of UWM only a select group gets to see. Uh, we're usually at about 275 or so. But today, Kevin O'Connor is giving the rest of us a behind-the-scenes tour Try not to get too far ahead. of UWM's private athletic facilities. And you can come on into the men's basketball team room and locker room. These private athletic facilities are located in the pavilion, which opened its doors in 2006 to offer students more room and help athletics with recruiting. You bring a recruit on campus, they tend to buy with their eyes, and they tend to look around and say, well, what do you have? Well, to start, there's a private weight room. You know, this part of the training really lasts all season. Luxurious team in locker rooms. The, the team's actual locker room, um, actually in pretty good shape, all in all. And let's not forget rehab. Hey, uh, Barbie. After a long day of training, when athletes need to work out a few kinks, they come here to UWM Sports Medicine Center. All these features are what sophomore Samantha Trowitzki says helps her excel on the volleyball court. It helps us, I guess, because we don't have to worry about other people being around using all the different equipment, like the dumbbells and such. But don't call it special treatment. 
I guess I definitely feel like we have some like amenities that other students don't. Those things have to be done in order for us to do our job too. It's true these hardworking student athletes do deserve some extra amenities, but in case you were wondering, some amenities do remain the same, like in the basketball locker rooms. Yup, sounds about right. In Milwaukee, I'm Eric Litzheim for Panther Vision. Some of the features in this, some of the features in the facilities were paid for through fundraising the teams did themselves. The new MATC president is taking to the streets to inform people of his goals for the coming years. Chanel Johnson has the story. The president and faculty held a paper bag luncheon discussing future endeavors for MATC. Coming from coming to uh, MATC from California, uh, I see an institution that has a lot of uh, a lot of breadth, a lot of depth, a lot of opportunity here in the community. Especially if we connect with um, the business community, external, along with our um, local community-based organizations in Milwaukee, we're going to go through a goal-setting process. It's going to be part of our strategic planning initiatives as an institution, and it's really part of our continuous quality improvement processes that we engage in as part of our accreditation work. Uh, there's, I think, an untapped need out there that we can address. I do, want, I do plan to work with uh, the staff and faculty here because uh, this can't be something that I accomplish. I think we will all have to accomplish it together. Milwaukee Public Television is made up of both the academic side of the house and also the professional side. And what is really unique about what we do at television is that those two sides interact. All of the staff here are employees of MATC, so having a president uh, who um, has some vision for the college and for the television station and how it fits in there is very important. I'm very, very optimistic, and uh, he's a very personable guy, and, uh, and I think we're going to enjoy working with him. With the MATC report for Panther Vision, I am Chanel Johnson. Dr. Michael Burke took office in January. For many, the weather was just too warm to resist the outdoors. This UWM student let her inner child come out and play on Thursday, but the wind didn't seem to want to play with her. Or maybe it did. It just didn't want to play her game. The gusty winds broke her $2 kite. After a bit of chase, she tried again, but with no avail. Well, Kyle, am I going to be able to fly my kite this weekend? That's all I want to know. <laughs> uh, you, maybe not over the weekend. Uh, during the week, maybe you, you might have a chance, but I would recommend not using a $2 kite. Maybe spend a little bit more of the you know, $5, $6. It gets you a high-quality kite, and it's not, you know, it'll get you a lot farther. Just so, making sure. Yeah, right. it's, it's not a bad idea, though. So, <laughs> let's take a look at uh, what we have going on today in weather. Currently, we're looking at a high of about 49 and then the temperature, or the dew point is about 36 degrees with the pressure holding steady at 30.28. We'll get more on that, about what those numbers actually mean in just a minute. Because a lot of times people look at those numbers and they just say, well, I don't even know what those numbers are. I'll explain them to you in just a minute. Today's high is going to be about 53 degrees. We have a lot of sun out, outside today. It's going to be a nice day. 53 along the lake here in Milwaukee. As you go farther inland, more west towards Madison, it's going to gradually get warmer and warmer. So actually, it's going to be a nice day. Even out in Waukesha, it's going to be about 7 degrees warmer, just about 4 or 5 miles off the lake, as it is than compared to right here in downtown Milwaukee. The lows for today. Here's where I'm going to talk about those numbers. See how Rhinelander's 30 degrees, Eau Claire 36, La Crosse was 38. It's pretty chilly out there. Well, the reason for that, it was high pressure all across the upper Midwest. So what that does is overnight, all the clouds are gone. Well, without any clouds, there's no blanket to insulate anybody here in Wisconsin. So the temperature or the warm weather from yesterday, all that heat just leaves, and therefore we're left with cold weather. So when the barometric pressure is at 30 degrees or 30 inches, that's pretty steady. That's steady for high pressure. High pressure means no clouds. No clouds mean no warm weather overnight. What that does mean, though, after the lows of 30s, mid-30s overnight, when the high pressure stays in for the day, there's a lot of sunshine. So then we get into today's highs. Look at Eau Claire, 69 degrees. Rhinelander, 30, or 65. Rhinelander was 30 degrees overnight. They had a 35 degree increase from last night throughout the rest of today. So it's going to warm up considerably thanks to all that high pressure and all that sunshine that we have coming up. Milwaukee, again, 53 degrees right along the lake. That's because of the lake breeze coming off. 
so once you get farther out to Madison, La Crosse, even into Oshkosh, temperatures will get warmer and warmer the farther west you get. So today's high at 53 in Milwaukee. Tonight we're looking at clear skies, low of about 37 with light winds. Again, that high pressure is going to keep all those clouds away, which means the temperatures drop overnight. Therefore, there's no blanket. Tomorrow we have a high of 58 degrees with a low of about 41. Winds are very light, but we are going to look at a lot of sunshine. Again, that high pressure, I know I keep saying it, but that high pressure is going to just give us some gorgeous weather for the next few days. Wednesday, we're looking at a high of 54, low of about 38 with some light, breezy, not too bad conditions. And then the rest of the week, we are looking at Thursday, all sunshine with our high of just about 59 degrees, even though it doesn't say it there. Trust me, it's 59 degrees on Thursday. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we're looking at our good chances of rain, highs in the mid or low to mid 60s. And it's not going to be actually that bad. They're just chances of rain, but um, I think it's going to actually turn out to be not too bad. Sunday, actually, we're looking at a better chance for thunderstorms than just rain. So keep, we're going to keep an eye on that. Um, shouldn't be too bad, though. So it's safe to say we want to spend your time outside, get it done early in the week? During the week, yes. When the sun is out for the next couple of days, um, the weekend, even though it's the weekend you normally want to get outside, but we do need that rain, all the plants and the grass. We, knew, we do need to uh, get some moisture on the ground. So Yeah, all right. Well, thanks, Kyle. We'll see you, see you for sports, sports in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yep. I will be back for sports in just after the break. So. <laughs> Coming up next, UWM baseball team takes the field in more ways than one. And you've heard about putting pedal to the metal, but some are putting their feet to the street. Recent discoveries within the Orion Nebula lend credence to the theory of a whole other solar system, predating our own, of course, the origins of which remain in microscopic gaseous form, thus increasing the chances of our not being alone. Thanks for watching UWM Panther Vision, Judge Best Student Newscast by the Northwest Broadcast News Association. Panther Vision is produced by students in the Department of Journalism and Mass Communication in association with Milwaukee Area Technical College. Some big news from the UWM men's basketball team. And the baseball team is on a hot streak. Kyle Warnke is back with our Panther Sports Update. Great to be back. The UWM, the UWM men's basketball team has found their man. The team's top recruiting prospect will join the Panthers next season. He's a six foot three point guard, and his name is Kalen Williams. And he's given UWM a verbal commitment. Williams played last season at Kirkwood Community College in Iowa, and he averaged 11 points and 7 assists per game. And the UWM men's baseball team is fighting to extend an impressive home winning streak. And as I found out, the team does more on the diamond than just play some ball. He shouts, Woo! Swing and a miss! And jeers. If he was above 5'6", that would have been a strike. <laughs> because Jimmy Lemke wants the Panthers to win. So anything you say, they're going to hear. It's a blast. Maybe he's helping because they've won 20 straight home games. Most important part is that we got, got those big wins this week and uh, got on a good winning streak. Cameron Amsrud was recently named Horizon League Pitcher of the Week. It's a great accomplishment and it's something I'm proud of. 
an honor he earned by allowing no earned runs in three games and having two saves. No matter if you get awards or you don't get awards, you got to go out there and pitch anyways. During the game, it's their teamwork you notice. But after the game, it's their work on the field you might not know about. We got different duties for people. We got tarps and lines and raking and everything. Everyone kind of does their own thing. A Division I team that gets its hands a little dirty. I have to uh, pick Claire on the mound. A Division I pitcher who doesn't let groundskeeping get in his way. I have to act like I'm doing it most of the time. <laughs> the Hank, as the players call it, has become more than just a place to play ball. It's a great place. We like to be folk, feel comfortable being here with the field. We know the, uh, you know the corners and we know the field and the hops and everything. It's a field the players call home. Everything's a lot, a lot better at home, and we definitely show that. In Milwaukee, I'm Kyle Warnke for Panther Vision. So the men's home winning streak is still running strong, but their overall winning streak ended just last week after seven, or seven wins in a row. The Iowa Hawkeyes beat the Panthers 9-3 last Tuesday, again putting an end to their winning streak. This past weekend, the Panthers lost two of their three games against the Butler Bulldogs to fall to 13-16 and 16 overall this season. The Panthers hope to bounce back Wednesday when they take on Bradley. Now to track and field. The women's track and field saw six top ten marks in team history over the weekend. The women competed in two meets, one in California and the other in Indiana. Six women did well enough in the top ten best events to, or to score top ten best scores in UWM history. Men's track and field now, we, they were also successful in competing in the Dave Rankin Invitational. Freshman John Simon lowered his own school record in the 5,000 meter, finished 17th overall in his event. Panthers returned to action at the Drake Relays and the Marquette Invitational in late April. Well, that's going to do it for sports. Back to you, Jeff and Jenny. The semester is winding down and graduation is just around the corner. Students are facing a tough decision of whether to attend class or enjoy the sunshine. As Panther Vision's Lindsay Mitchell reports, students are taking each day one step at a time. Whether it's a car, a bike, or a bus. Getting to campus on wheels seems to be the going trend. But as the weather gets nicer, UWM is challenging students to switch from wheels to heels. How many steps do you take in a day? I'm guessing less than 10,000. <laughs> Probably 20,000. Um, a million. <laughs> <laughs> While many students are in the dark about their strut, Sarah Shalnut has seen the light. The highest count I think I got was a couple weeks ago. I think it was a little over 8,000. Sarah has joined the fourth annual 10,000 Steps program sponsored by UWM's Klatchy Center. The program gives students free pedometers so they can track their progress one step at a time. But according to Sarah, reaching 10,000 isn't as easy as it sounds. I, I was a little dis disappointed depending on the day because I'd be, I spend, you know, a four hour shift at work and I'd be moving around and I'd look at it and I'm just like, oh, that's not nearly as much as I thought it was. But. Sarah is seeing the benefits and she's not alone. Program organizer Samantha Yeager says that even UWM staff is encouraging <laughs> students to get more than just good grades. I actually had one of my professors offer it up as an extra credit for one of her classes, so I guess we're hoping just to keep growing this um, program. And grow, it has. <laughs> With a free pedometer and 160 participants, students are eager to take a step towards better health. And I can definitely see what all the hype is about. 100 steps. Impressive. No matter how busy your schedule, Sarah says there's always time to take that extra step. I joined 10K because I'm pretty busy and it's really easy. You don't actually have to change anything you do every day. You just throw something on your waistband and you're done. Sarah couldn't be happier with her progress. <laughs> because in the 10,000 Steps program, every step you take is a step in the right direction. At UWM, I'm Lindsay Mitchell for Panther Vision. The 10,000 Steps program runs from April 5th to May 2nd. After the final step, all participants are entered into a raffle to win prizes. But the top two steppers receive personal training sessions at the Klatchy Gym. Thanks for tuning in to Panther Vision this evening. You can watch UWM's Panther Vision on, Panther, or on Time Warner Wisconsin On Demand channel and on Campus Cable channel 3.